Good morning, this is David Moore coming to you live from my office here at the house. I um, just wanted to have a few moments to share some encouragement because we do have times where we're all worried about this COVID thing. Um, I want you to just take a moment to get off the news and just to get into God's Word. If you'll open up your Bible to Psalms chapter 1, Psalms 1 starts, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. It starts off, blessed is the man, blessed is the person, extreme delight, extremely happily. Blessed comes from the old English word bliss, which meant to be happy. Happy is the person that does certain things. Three things we're told not to do, and then we're told to do something. The person that knows Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior is going to be happy because he's going to take this advice. When you turn from your sins and ask Jesus Christ to save you, he puts the Holy Spirit within you. So for those who are saved, who have trusted in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, pray and ask God to use his word to teach you um, more about him and just to take this advice and heed it. It says, blessed is the man, happy is the person that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly doesn't take advice from this world, doesn't go to TV, doesn't go to the internet, doesn't go to Facebook or social media for their advice. Doesn't take the advice of this world. Happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Doesn't take the advice for the ungodly. Well, if they don't take the advice of the ungodly, where do they get their advice from? We'll find out in verse two. The second part after that is, okay, they don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners. They don't go along with crowd. Well, everybody's doing it, so it's got to be right. No, that's not true. Just because everybody's doing it doesn't make it right. So a Christian that is happy, the happy Christian, does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, doesn't stand or go along with crowd, doesn't stand in the way of sinners, and doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful. When everybody else is griping, mumbling, and complaining, when they're getting on Facebook and saying, hey, this is bad, that is bad, and whining, guess what? The Christian doesn't, the happy Christian anyways, doesn't participate in that. Because the Bible says that we don't sit in the seat of the scornful. When people are telling lies and spreading rumors and gossip, the Christian does, doesn't join in, in the gossip. The happy Christian anyways doesn't join in, in the gossip. Why? Because we don't sit in the seat of the scornful. By the way, if you notice verse 1 of Psalms 1, it's the progression of backsliding. You start off walking, then you're standing, then you're sitting. It's the progression of backsliding. Instead of walking the walk of faith, you go to standing and doing nothing, to sitting and being one of the ones that complain about those people who are doing something. And we have many people today that are complaining about the leaders in this community who they're sitting on their tail ends complaining about those who are out there leading and trying to make this world a better place. Don't be one of the complainers. Be one of the people that are helping make a positive improvement to this community and to the lives of people around you. Show the love of Christ during this time. Um, well, all times show the love of Christ, but even more so now. But so the happy Christian doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, doesn't stand in the way of sinners, doesn't sit in the seat of scornful. So what does he do? It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. So instead of getting your mind full of the garbage from the internet and from the news channels, the happy Christian will fill his mind with the good things of Christ. He will be reading his Bible, or she, in this possible, you know, either he or she will be reading their Bibles and spending time with God, getting alone in their prayer closet. They will watch a video like this and just get some good news of Jesus Christ into their life because people need Jesus. We all need more Jesus at this time. So get into the Bible. Spend time in God's Word. Turn off the TV set. Turn off um, your social media and get into God's Word. Spend less time on the internet and more time in the Bible because 
he spends time in it it's not just reading God's Word, it's meditating on it day and night, which means it's more than just five minutes in the morning, flipping open a Bible and saying, oh, look, I found a verse, Jesus wept. That's got me for the day. No, it doesn't. Be systematic. Really read God's Word. Get into the Word of God. Study it. Read chapters of the Bible. My encouragement is read three chapters of the Old Testament, one chapter of the New Testament. And if you do that every day, you will read through your Bible in one year. Um... Another thing you can do is pick out the day of the month and the book of Proverbs. If it's the 15th day, you read Proverbs 15 because there's 31 day or 31 chapters in Proverbs. You know, go through the book of Proverbs, Psalms. You can pick out the book of Psalms. Find a book, find something in God's word and study it. Meditate on the law of the Lord day and night. And this is where we get to the promise of verse 3. The person that, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. The person that doesn't do the first three and does meditate on God's word, here's the promise, but his delight is in the, I mean, but he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. If you want to see God really work in your life, God show up and show off in your life, quit. Quit doing the things that bring you down and bring you into backsliding. Don't take the advice of the world. Don't go with the crowd. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. But do spend time in God's Word. Spend time in God's Word in prayer and apply God's Word. Then get up off your knees and watch God work because He's promised to bless you. And it says He will be like a tree planted by rivers of water. The word translated for rivers of water is specifically irrigation canals. God has given us the Bible to give us an irrigation canal for our soul. We can grow in Christ. We can see God work. We can feel the love of God well up in us. We can have the victory in Christ if we will be in his word. So many people lead a defeated Christian life because they don't spend time in the word of God. They don't spend time in prayer and then they wonder why they don't see God working in their life. If we want to see God working in our lives, we will spend time in prayer. We will spend time in his word because God wrote a love letter to us. It's the Bible. If we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we're going to be spending time in his word, studying his word. We're going to be in it day and night because that's the irrigation canal to our soul. That's what God uses to help us to grow into a tree that produces fruit. And a Christian should be producing fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. We should be producing fruit. People should see Jesus in us when they see us. Our lives should be producing fruit. What's the evidence you're truly saved? Is a changed life. If your life's not changed, if you're living the same way you were before you were saved, you're not saved because the Holy Spirit comes to live within the Christian. If any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. When we are saved, the Holy Spirit indwells us. He lives within us. He makes us a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So we will love the Lord with all our heart. And as we do, we spend time in his word. And then he gives us his word to irrigate our soul. So we will be a tree that bears fruit and a fruit that remains. And it says, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. We want God to prosper our lives. Then we need to do the conditions of this. And the conditions for God's prospering are one, blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, quit taking the advice of the ungodly. Two, quit standing in the way of sinners, quit going with the crowd. Three, quit sitting in the seat of scornful, quit joining in and the whining and complaining and spreading gossip on social media and all the other places. And then spend time in God's word, delighting in the Lord. The Bible also says over in Psalms 37, 4, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord by spending time in His Word, and He will make you a tree, like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth fruit in His season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever He doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Chaff was like sawdust on a shop floor. They used to sweep up the dust, the sawdust, the chaff, and throw it into burn barrels. It's interesting that the ungodly are represented by chaff because God's going to sweep them up and going to chuck them in the burn barrel of hell because of their sin. 
For the wages of sin is death, eternal separation from God and hell. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So they are like the chaff, which the wind drives away. By the way, the wind drives away means that they have no root. They're not firmly grounded. A tree is firmly grounded. When a strong wind comes up, the tree does not move. When a wind comes up and chaff, sawdust on the floor, it blows around in a shop. Or like the tumbleweed. I don't know if you all remember a Wally Coyote and the tumbleweed. But the tumbleweed blew just whichever way the wind took it. The unsaved do not have any grounding, do not have any roots, so they blow around when times of adversity come. They fear and have nothing to place their faith in because they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So the ungodly are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The ungodly will not be there on the day when at the bank of the seat of Christ. When God hands out the rewards to Christians, the ungodly will not be there. The Bible does say, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So the ungodly will confess that Jesus is Lord. They'll believe a moment too late. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. Turn from your sins. Place your faith and trust in the free gift of salvation that Jesus Christ purchased for you with his own blood on the cross of Calvary. If you are saved, we have an eternal home in heaven. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. And praise God, with all of the things going on today, I'm looking forward to the rapture, the time when Jesus comes back to take his children home. It may be today. It may not be. Because back in the earth, I've heard a lot of people say, hey, we're ready for the rapture. It may be any time now. But back in the early 1900s, they went through the Spanish flu. Churches were closed because of the Spanish flu. A pastor in Kentucky was arrested for having preached on a Sunday to his congregation during the Spanish flu. Back in the early 1900s, they thought God was coming at any time. Now, we know in 1948 that Israel became a nation. We know that one within that generation, this generation will not pass away. So we know a generation 70 to 80 years. So um, we know that the time of the Lord's return is soon. But we know that he's coming soon and we better be ready. We also know that everybody out there that doesn't know Jesus Christ is going to be in a world of hurt when Christ returns. So we need to be out there sharing Jesus Christ. That's why we need to be spending time in God's word, in prayer, so that when we get up off our knees from praying, we will be out living Jesus Christ and shining for Jesus Christ because people need Jesus more than ever. We need to be the ray of hope, the ray of sunshine that people see where they see Jesus in us. I hope this morning this has been encouraging to you. Um, just take some time to get off social media and get off the news and get into God's Word. Thank you so much. This has been David Moore. I just am encouraged that you all took time this morning to watch this short little video. And maybe each time I get a chance, every time God lays on my heart, I'm going to be here. I'm sharing some more of God's Word with you just because we need to be in God's Word instead of focusing on the negative. We need to focus in on Jesus. Have a blessed day. God bless.